Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSC in English with an Academy. So let's crack it would be the slogan for it. And I am I have started up with dealing some of the most important aspects for your UPSC CSC preparation, especially for prelims, where NCITs would be playing a crucial role in your prelims as well as mains. So that's the reason why I have started this particular course series of summaries of NCRT. So please try to watch these lectures daily. So earlier uh, we used to have this particular lecture series at 8.30 p.m. in the night but uh, because of huge students demand I have shifted this to the day section and exactly at 12 p.m. daily I will be coming up live along with this NCRT summaries. Clear? If you want to know about me like I have five years of teaching experience and also I have uh, like appeared for UPSC interview twice and every time I have given this preliminary examination, I have cracked this with flying colors, clear. So despite of being a failure in this examination, I have gained huge knowledge and I have guided huge number of aspirants since the last five years where I have guided uh, students, especially with geography as optional, who have cracked it very easily, clear. So if you want to just sit at your home, and if you want to crack UPSC CSC with India's largest learning platform, that is Unacademy, clear, you have to just get the subscription of Unacademy channel. So how to get the subscription done once, try to download the app. So go to Play Store and download Unacademy learning app. And once you download the app, go to homepage and once you reach the homepage, there you can see like the goal called as UPSC CSC because Unacademy uh, gives uh, training for 30 plus examinations right so in this one of the most important aspect is UPSC CSC so there choose your goal as UPSC CSC and you will find this button called as get subscription so it will be redirected towards the page of subscription page where you can choose one month three month six month 12 month 24 month courses for your subscription prices clear so Clear. So what are the things which you are going to get? So once you get the subscription, let's say you have got the subscription for 12 months, right away from that movement itself, you can enjoy these daily live classes which are performed by, sorry, daily live classes which are performed by different educators where you can chat with the educator in the session, you can engage in the discussions, you can ask your doubts and answer polls. All these things happen while the class is going on, clear? So apart from this, you can find some of the structured courses which have been performed by top educators as I have already made sure that you will be getting, see, we have 100 plus educators on this platform. These 100 plus educators, they will be getting up with these particular standards like daily live classes and they will be coming up daily live along with the structured courses. It's not like they'll be coming up randomly. If I start dealing polity, let's assume in this way. So I'll prepare a course structure, a schedule for the upcoming one to two months. And daily I'll be dealing that particular topic. So you can choose either to opt this particular polity thing or by the other faculty who is dealing polity clear. So in this regard, it will 100% help you. Apart from this, on this platform, you will be getting live test series and quizzes like through which you can evaluate your preparation and unlimited live access. As I've already said, you can enjoy the lectures of every educator who is present on this platform. Let's assume you have missed these particular lectures. You can watch recorded lectures. So you can watch these recorded lectures n number of time. So next, uh, you can see like these are some of the top educators where description is uh, like describing them is not required because they are already known on every platform. So these particular educators, as I have said, 100 plus educators in this we have educators all across the country who will be helping you in UPSC preparation, see. And UPSC this year, they have planned five exclusive batches. Apart from this module based, generally an academy used to have some module based like ideal polity, ideal geography, ideal history, clear. So in this way, it used to make some of the core structures, but an academy thought in the last year, like they have to have a separate batches where they have to, uh, aspirants have to follow it very rigorously. So earlier we had two batches for this UPSC 2020, but now it has become five. So an academy has created five exclusive batches for complete preparation of UPSC 2021 and 2022, clear. You can see this batch has been already started from 27th April itself. One batch especially gives emphasis on 2022. This batch is Mission UPSC CSC 2022 batch. This is a bilingual batch 
where uh, the educators would be speaking up in English and Hindi. So both the languages would be used. And this is perfect Hindi medium batch which has already started on 27th of April. This is UPSC CSC 2021 batch and you can see entire syllabus would be covered prelims and mains test series would be there along with the analysis dedicated doubt clearing sessions and interview preparations. All these things would be like if you follow this particular batch these are the things which you are going to get. And one more batch which is present that is exclusively expedition batch 2021. It also starts right away like uh, in the 20s uh, it has started already on 27th April so again one more batch is like bilingual batch for 2021 mission UPSC 2021 apart from this you have enlightenment batch 2021 like this particular batch is a late night bilingual batch this particular batch is helpful only for those who are specially working as professionals. Do remember you can join an academy and you can attend any of these particular batches. So whichever batch you may feel comfort, you can attend these batches clear. So an academy already started this uh, UPSC championship on 29th March, 12th April, 26th April, 10th May and 24th May. And these are the academic directors who curated and reviewed the test. Everyone about Rakesh sir, Brunal sir and Atish Mathur sir. They have dedicatedly curated and reviewed the test. So already the test has been started. We have completed up with three tests. No issues. You can just attend now. Also, you can write these examinations now. Also, this is all India free mock test for UPSC CSC prelim 2020 and you can enroll. Once you download the app, you can enroll for this particular thing clear. So my personal guarantee is if you solve this five test papers, there are high chances at least 50 to 70 percentage of questions maybe directly or indirectly would be coming from this particular championship clear. So like apart from this in the app you can see some of the special classes done. So see this is the subscription page like per one month it is 7200, 3 month 18 and 6 month 12 month clear so generally i suggest aspirants to go for a 12 month or 24 month why because per month price would be very less when you compare it, uh, when you compare it with one month three month and six month clear so we'll start up with our discussion this is up with the promotion of an academy so what you do is try to get the subscription done today itself hello siddharth uh, i did not get you please can you drop the message what's the problem done so in the initial thing like we will be discussing about the motions of the earth it is the third chapter in your sixth class ncrt so hope everyone has seen your chapters based on ncrt's like this is the for third third chapter of this particular sixth ncrt clear so in this like we have the chapter by named called as motions of earth generally we have two motions of the earth one is rotation and one is revolution clear so rotation and revolution once you see in this particular regard so rotation is one such kind of a phenomena which is made by earth where earth rotates from west to east and it is the eastern hemisphere which gets the sunrise first and earth rotates at a tilted angle of 23 end of degree so earth would be rotating on its own axis and that axis would be tilted at 23 end of degree and on this tilted axis earth would be covering its one rotation it means if it rotate once on its own axis it is considered as one rotation and if you see earth takes somewhere around approximately 24 hours to complete one rotation so earth to be uh, covered at one rotation like it takes 24 hours and what happens because of the rotation see earth along with rotation it will complete one revolution revolution is nothing but in its elliptical order in the elliptical orbit earth revolving around the sun is called as revolution which would be taking somewhere around 365 and 1 by 4th day clear for one revolution it is 365 one fourth day and for one rotation it is approximately 24 hours which earth would be considering clear so what happens because of rotation see when the earth would be rotated 
half of the portion of the earth would be facing the sun and the rest half wouldn't be facing the sun the back side region would be experiencing night hence the portion the half of the portion which is experiencing the sun it will be experiencing day that's the reason why half of the hemisphere would be experiencing night and half of the hemisphere would be experiencing day please do remember this particular point clear so if you see the uh, because of this particular rotation we would be experiencing day and night clear just one minute and uh, second most important thing which you have to remember it is revolution clear revolving rotating along with along its own axis earth will also follow second motion that is revolution it means earth tends to move in its elliptical order around the sun which would be called as revolution so generally we have a notion that because of revolution we would be having concept of seasons yes this might be true up to one certain regard but it is not only revolution but it is also tiltness of earth axis tiltness of earth axis these are the two reasons why we have the concept of seasons please do remember this particular point so revolution along with the tiltness of earth axis we would be having concept of season clear so generally we used to have a negative ideology related with the season what was the negative ideology related with the seasons was so even instead like i used to believe the same since like up to the 8th and 9th standard i also believed the same perspective like when earth would be closer to the sun then we would be having summer and when earth would be far away from the sun then we would be having winter so this was the phenomena which i used to believe clear yes i used to believe that because of revolution of sea uh, revolution of earth we used to have the seasons and during the portion of revolution when the earth is closer to the sun i'll be proving it wrong see on january 3rd earth would be very closer to the sun and that phenomena is called as perihelion and that phenomena is called as perihelion phenomena and during this perihelion phenomena when the earth is very closer to the sun then we should have sunary third we, we would be having a situation called as perihelion and during that exactly we should experience summer according to our point of knowledge but summer is not experienced what we would be experiencing during jan third it would be winter so this phenomena which we used to think perihelion phenomena and during this epilion phenomena we would be having uh, generally it is far away from the sun on july 4th we should have some, uh, winter during that phenomena but we have summer during that certain phenomena so in this regard on jan 3rd we would be experiencing perihelion and on july 4th we would be experiencing epilion phenomena clear so due to this the concept of theory of earth very closer to the sun would be experiencing summer and far away experiencing winter would be rejected so what is the reason for the concept of season it is revolution along with the tiltness of earth axis this all in a slant way there are two types of sun rays there are two types of insulation which reach onto the surface either the insulation reaches in a direct way or the insulation reaches in a parallel or a slant way during this particular phenomena what happens is the region which is experiencing the direct sun rays would be experiencing maximum heat and it would experience summer and that region which is experiencing slant sun rays it receives very less amount of insulation and hence we would be experiencing winter clear so this is the phenomena which generally happens it means if one hemisphere is experiencing winter the other hemisphere would be experiencing summer there is very simple difference between winter on tropic of capricorn and during the sunrise falling directly on uh, tropic of capricorn it would be summer in the southern hemisphere winter in the northern hemisphere hence during december 22nd the concept which we would, would be observing that is called as winter solstice phenomena so this question was asked in 2019 payment clear so apart from this if you see like as the earth moves further as the earth moves further in this direction during the 21st march earth would be reaching this particular position and now if you see this particular position which is facing the sun no particular hemisphere is facing the sun directly 
then it would be the equator which would be experiencing the maximum insulation. So hence when we move away from the equator slowly the insulation tends to decrease. This is what the general scenario happens. Please do remember this particular point. And if you see in this particular regard, it is equator which experiences maximum temperature and moving away from the equator, the temperature slowly starts reducing back. Clear. So that's the reason why what generally happens is we would be experiencing equal amount of sun rays in the both hemispheres because as it is located near the equator, so we would be experiencing this particular kind of uh, temperatures like when we move away from the equator Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn would be experiencing the same definite day and night clear so hence because of this equal days and nights in the both the hemispheres we term this particular scenario as equinox phenomena and as it is a spring season we would be considering it as a spring equinox do remember that happens on March 21st clear and if you see like the sun rays here are falling so many people have uh, covered the doubts. Sri Devi, Venkata, ma'am, sir, cover all chapters of NCIT. Yes, I'll be covering all chapters of NCIT. Why only on Jan 3rd? Just I'll get back to you. Clear. If you see in this particular regard, see the sun rays which are present, they are falling directly on Tropic of Cancer. Clear. So during this phenomena, the northern hemisphere would be experiencing uh, facing the sun directly. Hence, the direct sunrise would be falling on Tropic of Cancer. The two in the northern hemisphere region. Clear. So what generally happens is northern hemisphere experiences summer during this session and southern hemisphere experiences winter. You can check out during the month of June, May, June, July, August, we would be experiencing the summer sessions. So this is what the scenario generally happens. Clear. We would be experiencing the concept of summer and exactly on June 21st if you see the sun rays would be falling on Tropic of Cancer itself. Clear. So please try to understand this particular statement. If one hemisphere is experiencing summer, the other hemisphere would be experiencing winter. There is no doubt at all this scenario happens. Clear. So this is the phase during the June. It is the phase of monsoon for us. So, you know, like a monsoonal phenomena, which generally enters into India in the month of June. So just because of the sun rays, which are falling perpendicularly on the Indian landmass, we would be having the concept of monsoon, which would be developed. What it is, how it is, we will be discussing later on in the later NCRTs while we discuss Indian geography. Clear. So moving further, if you check out again, the revolution continues and exactly on September 23rd, whenever it reached. It is again called as autumn equinox. Why it is called as autumn equinox? Again, this phenomena which is present during this phenomena also, it is the equator which receives the sun rays maximum. And in the both the hemispheres, the amount of sun rays would be decreasing from the equator. So both the hemispheres experience equal amount of temperatures. Hence, that's why we consider it as equinox and it occurs during autumn season. We call it as autumn equinox. This happens on September 23rd. And apart from moving further again, clear again during December 22nd, same scenario repeats southern hemisphere experience summer, northern hemisphere experiencing winter and moving further again equinox and moving further again solstice and moving further again equinox. So in this regard, because of the revolution, do remember this point, because of the revolution of the earth and because of the tiltness of earth axis we would be experiencing the concept of season because of rotation we have concept of day and night and because of revolution along with the tiltness of the earth axis we would be experiencing the concept of seasons clear so how many of you like uh, who are present do they have any doubts how many of you are live if you have any doubts please you can drop it in the live chat session Is there any doubt on this until now? Chalo. So moving further, if you see, like we used to discuss about a concept called as six month day and six month night, six month day and six month night. How many of you remember about this particular concept of six month day and six month night clear? If you see like, for example, if you are on North Pole, 
during December 22nd. Do you really think the sunrise would reach this North Pole? Because North Pole is almost back to that of sunrise. So sunrise never tend to reach into this particular landmass. Clear? So North Pole experiences complete night. Until which date it experiences complete night is? Like here if you could see the North Pole which is present. That is not receiving the sun at all. And here until the North Pole reaches to this phenomena of June 21st, the sun rays are not visible to this North Pole. Hence North Pole from the month of December 22nd until June 21st, it would be experiencing night. Is this clear? And later on, if you see some other regard, like now South Pole is covered back and North Pole is facing front. Now for continuous phase from June 21st to December 22nd, North Pole continuously experiences day and vice versa happens. If North Pole is experiencing six month night, then South Pole experiences six month day. And if South Pole experiences six month night, North Pole experiences six month day. So because of the coverage portion of the sun rays not reaching to the backward portion of the globe, hence we would be experiencing the concept of six month day and six month night clear so this is what generally happens during the revolution please do remember these dates jan 3rd very nearest uh, sorry very farthest position uh, is epileon and very farthest position happens on july 4th and very nearest position happens on jan 3rd which is called as perilion phenomena clear and questions are on and off and asked on this particular solstice equinox please try to remember these statements clear and next, if you see the next chapter which is present, that chapter would be having a concept called as domains of earth. So in the earth surface like we would be having three major domains. One is atmosphere which is the most important life giving thing. Next is the crustal solid surface which is present the topmost crust. It is called as lithosphere and the water body different oceans and sea bodies they are called as hydrosphere clear. So combination of these three interaction of atmosphere with lithosphere with hydrosphere. So interaction between these three will be giving us a combined phenomena which is called as biosphere. Please do remember this particular statement atmosphere getting in connection with lithosphere and getting in connection with hydrosphere. We would be having this particular phenomena called as biosphere which would be developed. If you see as I have already said lithosphere is solid portion of earth which is called as lithosphere. Generally lithosphere is a mechanical differentiation term which we which would be used generally in on and off in layman terms we use it as earth crust. But the topmost layer of the crust that is earth crust along with the some portions of the upper mantle it would be considered as lithosphere. So this particular lithosphere comprises of solid rocks and thin layers of soil that contain nutrient elements which sustain organisms clear. So if you would be seeing there are two divisions of lithosphere one is continental uh, lithosphere and one is oceanic lithosphere. Please do remember this everyone know about different continents right. Everyone know about Asia, everyone know about Europe, everyone know about Africa. So in this regard, there are few important factual informations which you have to every time gather with. And those factual informations are given in the NCRTs. Once go through it, you will understand. See, if you say at least you have to remember that Asia is the largest continent. And this particular portion covers one third of the total land area of the earth. And continents lies in the eastern hemisphere completely, north eastern hemisphere. But do you really think the question comes in UPSC from this margin like do they ask about which of the following continents are the largest one or the smallest one? No, it is absolutely false. If you see this particular continent or uh, this particular questions which are of very basic sixth standard or fifth standard questions would never be asked. But they might give you some physical features like they might give you Taklamakan desert or they might give you Gobi desert or they might give you related with Black Sea. They might ask a question related with uh, Israel, uh, Israel's border with Mediterranean Sea or they might ask you any question related with this, the Caspian Sea, the Black Sea. So these kind of physical feature questions would be generally asked. So when I say it as Asia, your mind has to completely divert towards the physical and political boundaries. 
so this is the first initial thing which you have to mark and regard with the reason behind it is questions generally won't be asked in a factual manner rather questions would be asked in a geographical manner so whenever you try to read these particular things try to focus upon try to at least mark 10 di different physical features which are related with this particular asia try to map different deserts try to map different continental features like mountains plateaus plains so try to do that reading this particular statement that asia is the largest continent you are not 100 uh, percent it's not true that you know everything regarded with asia so please try to do this keep atlas in front of you or keep a map in front of you and then try to see this particular thing clear and if you see through this asia tropic of cancer passes through this every person in this world know this clear people at least once they might have seen the world map they would be knowing this but you have to see from which of the following countries of Asia Tropic of Cancer passes. There would be a direct question. So through which of the following countries of Asia Tropic of Cancer would be passing? Would it pass through Oman? Would it pass through Saudi Arabia? Would it pass through Bangladesh? Would it pass through Taiwan? Would it pass through India? Would it pass through Myanmar? Would it pass through China? So all these things have to be remembered. So please try to open your atlas and please try to check out whether from which of the following countries you are having this tropic of cancer which is passing clear. And also see the boundaries when this particular Asian continent would be divided by rest of continents. If you see like uh, Red Sea would be bifurcating Africa with Asia. This is 100% true. In such a way, the European Russia which is have, which we have and the Asian Russia, Russia which we have, it would be divided by one particular fold mountain system. They are called as Aral Mountains. So you have to see at least these kind of physiographic divisions over there. Clear? Yes, Sridevi, ma'am. I did not get you Brazil and so. And if you want to see about Europe, Europe is one such kind of beautiful continent which is completely surrounded by water bodies clear so try to see the water bodies which are surrounding europe like if you see on the southern boundary we have mediterranean sea and the southeastern boundary comprises of uh, black sea and the other margins which are present you can see the sea of azov sea of marmara and moving top you can see north sea english channel bay of biscay and you can see different water bodies surrounding this particular european regions clear please try to make a list of all these things all these water bodies which surrounds this particular european continent clear so through this particular continent that is europe arctic circle that is 66 end of degree north latitude that passes through this particular europe clear so once please try to locate the world map and also locate it and also please do remember try to see the landlocked countries which are present in europe what are landlocked countries countries which doesn't have the connection with the sea or the ocean they would be considered as landlocked countries so please try to remember the landlocked countries which are present in the europe clear so next africa which is one of the most important continents post asia it is the second largest continent everyone know this clear so all the three latitudes three important latitudes if you see tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn and equator it passes through this particular continent and this is only one such kind of continent through which these three important latitudes would be passing clear equator almost cuts the africa into two halves like it passes through Gabon, Democratic uh, Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, like uh, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania region, it passes through this particular margin. So you have to at least remember the borders where through equator passes and Tropic of Cancer passes through Mali, Mauritius, Libya, Egypt, uh, through all these boundaries, Cancer would be passing and Tropic of Capricorn passes through Namibia uh, region and also it passes through South Africa. So in this way, please try to remember once open your atlas, wantedly I have skipped the African map over here. So if I had mentioned African map over here, you might have just seen that and left it off. But once you open the atlas and if you see, then you can grasp it very easily rather than my preparation for UPSC is not that important than your preparation for UPSC. So please try to remember this particular thing. Apart from this, if you see the Saharan desert, which is the world's largest hot desert it is located in africa in the northwestern portion and the continent is also bound by seas and oceans on all sides if you see the african continent in this regard 
डन ऑन द नॉर्थ वी हैव मेडिटरेनियन सी एंड ऑन द वेस्ट वी हैव एटलांटिक ओशन एंड टू द साउथ ईस्टर्न एंड ईस्टर्न मार्जिन वी हैव इंडियन ओशन लोकेटेड एंड टू द साउथ कंप्लीटली वी हैव सदर्न ओशन सो यूरोप एंड अफ्रीका इट इज बाउंडेड बाय वाटर बॉडीज प्लीज डू रिमेंबर दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट इट इज हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इफ यू सी द वर्ल्ड्स लॉन्गेस्ट रिवर द नाइल रिवर फ्लोस थ्रू दिस पर्टिकुलर अफ्रीकन रीजन इट सेल्फ नेक्स्ट नॉर्थ अमेरिका इट इज द थर्ड लार्जेस्ट कॉन्टिनेंट फर्स्ट इट इज एशिया नेक्स्ट अफ्रीका नेक्स्ट नॉर्थ अमेरिका इट इज लिंक टू द साउथ अमेरिका बाय द नैरो स्ट्रिप कॉड इज इस्तुमस ऑफ पनामा नाउ वॉट इज इस्तुमस हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू नो अबाउट स्ट्रेट straight is nothing but if you see in indian margin like a narrow water body which divides two land masses so park strait divides india with sri lanka that particular narrow water body which divides two land masses it would be called as strait and opposite to that of strait it is called as isthmus if a narrow land mass divides two oceanic bodies or two water bodies it would be called as isthmus do remember this particular statement clear so isthmus of panama joins north america with south america and south america like you have two important oceans surrounding to its east and west what are the two important oceans one is pacific ocean on the west and atlantic ocean on the east it is very very simple once you see the world map you can easily make it through and if you see like we have four set of mountains around the world one is andes in the south america one is rockies in the north america himalayas in asia and in europe we have alps so all these set of four mountains will be considered as formation of alpine mountains so it means four mountain groups the himalayas rockies and andes and alps they were formed during one phase of the earth's formation it means the rest of the three mountain ranges they are formed during the formation of alps so hence these are considered as alpine mountains and if you see all these four set of mountains are fold mountains they are formed because of the continental oceanic collision i'll show you the examples of fold mountains so don't worry regarding with that and in such a way the longest mountain range of the world that is andes which are present in the south america they right away extend from northern portion of the south america towards the southern portion on the western boundaries apart from this the south america would be having the most important river amazon this is not that highly important like which is the world's largest river at least you have to know this is a factual information but try to see the where the amazon river has started originating try to see where the amazon river is flowing this is what the background which we have to check out for upsc and apart from this if you see australia it is the smallest continent lies in southern hemisphere bounded by oceans and seas it is also called as island continent as well the most important thing in australia is half of the australia is desert if you see somewhere around the western margin of the entire australia would be desert it would be calculated by great sandy deserts and all clear so this is about lithosphere and now we will start up with atmosphere then if you see what is atmosphere simply reading about uh, um we we have a separate branch of geography in the physical geography that is climatology so in that climatology by reading about the atmosphere and by the changes which are been brought by the atmosphere so atmosphere is nothing but where we stand right away next to the portion where we stand that would be considered as atmosphere which is one of the most important aspects for the existence of life on the earth surface clear so this atmosphere is nothing but the entire space from the topmost level of the crust would be considered as atmosphere which has to be understood if you want to understand about the climatology and in this particular regard if you see this atmosphere is very important we will be going deeper into the atmosphere when we read about different standards of books but as is this is summary of 6th ncert we'll only stick to the structure of atmosphere itself clear so like if you want more and more sessions like i have did a marathon session on climatology where entire climatology i have been covering over there so please try to create um try to watch this particular lecture over there and you can also drop your comments in live chat session or comment session so that i'll be seeing them and commenting or replying it back clear if you see the atm atmosphere in general we have four layers of atmosphere the first one is troposphere and the second is stratosphere and the third is mesosphere 
and the fourth is thermosphere or it can be sometimes considered as ionosphere as well clear so in this regard the first layer if you observe troposphere which is one of the most important layers out of these four every layer has its own importance but it is troposphere which is the lowest layer of atmosphere and which is also highly important for you and this troposphere it extends up to a height of 8 kilometers near the poles and 18 kilometers near the equator so it means the height of the troposphere would be reducing from equator towards the poles clear so this is the most important aspect which you have to remember and this particular troposphere which is present this will have a phenomena called as normal lapse rate if you see the temperatures of this particular troposphere what happens is the temperature tends to decrease in the troposphere and that decrease happens at a certain rate of 6.5 degrees centigrade for every thousand meters so this would be termed as normal lapse rate generally when we move altitude wise when we move altitude wise do remember this this particular altitude wise whenever we move there would be decrease in temperature and that decrease in temperature would be in a standard rates that would be 6.5 degree centigrade per every thousand meter please do please do remember this particular point apart from this if you see in this particular troposphere every weather phenomena takes place every weather phenomena so every weather phenomena in the sense like let it be cloud formation let it be precipitation let it be wind movement or any other weather related phenomena that happens in the troposphere itself please do remember this certain point so these are the importance and many times we only remember that uh, the planes, the aeroplanes, the jet plane to travel at most like one hour or two hours difference clear. So hence such kind of domestic flights generally they won't reach the stratosphere rather they move in the topmost layer of the troposphere near to that of tropopause. And now question comes what is tropopause? It is nothing but between every layer like between tropo and strato, between strato and meso, between uh, meso and dino, we would be having a transition layer of somewhere around 1.5 kilometer and that particular transition layer between troposphere and stratosphere is called as tropopause and if you see in this particular tropopause we will not have increase or decrease of temperature rather near the tropopause we would be experiencing constant rate of temperatures and in that particular regard when we experience constant rate of temperatures in the tropopause near to that zone generally domestic flights would be taking off so this particular tropopause is a transition zone between tropo and strato and coming to strato the second most important layer of the tropo it is one of the layers where temperature tend to increase generally temperature has to decrease with increase in altitude but that doesn't happen in stratosphere in stratosphere temperature tends to increase rather than decrease the reason behind it is in this zone we have presence of ozone layer everyone know about the ozone layer right so ozone is one such kind of typical kind of gas which is triatom form of oxygen and such kind of triatom form of oxygen is also present in troposphere but the maximum ozone layer is developed between 30 to 40 kilometer range within the stratosphere so this particular ozone layer protects us from direct uv rays which are being received by the sun so the sun radiates the insulation the sun radiates the energy and they would be reached onto that surface and out of this the uv rays are filtered through this particular ozone layer and uv rays after filtering back they will be reaching the earth surface so it means without ozone layer the sustenance on the earth surface wouldn't be possible at all that's why ozone layer is highly important for us please do remember this clear so many a times when they ask a question related with the ozone layer they might ask you question in this regard ozone layer is only present in stratosphere it is absolutely false it is present in troposphere as well but maximum content of the ozone layer would be present within the stratosphere do remember this point troposphere would also have the connection of ozone layer clear so do remember this particular point yes Sridevi ma'am I just asked about those countries which passes uh, through Tropic of Cancer from Asia and Brazil like if you see that is something else 
done so if you see the mesosphere post stratosphere in stratosphere generally jet aircrafts which are warrior planes they would be taking off to miss the radar zone from the surface and along with that like we have huge escape velocity which is present in stratosphere because there is no horizontal or vertical air mass moment in the stratosphere that makes the flight to move very easily over there that's the reason why we would be having the jet planes generally considering the stratospheric layer itself and the next layer which is present that is mesosphere and between meso and strato we have a pause again that is called as stratopause done and this particular mesosphere is important for us because in this particular mesosphere we would be having complete reduction of temperature temperature reaches almost to minus 100 degree centigrade the reason behind it is in the mesosphere we have absence of greenhouse gases either to trap the radiation from their surface or we have absence of ozone layer at least to trap the insulation so this particular mesosphere doesn't have any of the gases which can trap the heat hence the temperature tends to reduce in this particular mesospheric layer clear and uh, while the temperature reaches minus 100 degree centigrade reaching the topmost layer of mesosphere it is called as the coldest layer of our atmosphere and how mesosphere would be helping us how it would be protecting us this is also highly important for us so if you see this particular mesosphere as it is the coldest layer it will make the meteors which tend to come onto that surface if you might have read about meteors and asteroids these meteors sometimes they would be burnt away and those burnt portions would be trying to enter into its atmosphere so when these kind of structures would be trying to enter into earth atmosphere it is mesosphere which protects us so because of the cold air layer uh, cold layer coldest layer of the atmosphere this mesosphere makes this particular meteor to burn away in this region so in that regard it would be helping us clear and next layer which is present post the mesosphere at 80 km range that is called as generally ionosphere clear so the presence of a gap between mesosphere and ionosphere it is called as mesopause and this particular ionosphere in this region what happens is this is also called as thermosphere just reason behind it is from this range of ionosphere temperature continuously increases from now we won't have any decrease of temperature so what generally happens is in this ionosphere the gaseous molecules which are present they are present in the form of ions so as we have uh, the ions which are present in this ionosphere so what would generally happens is the uh, these ions would be like charged they would be charged just because of the insulation which it intakes so these charged ion particles which are present in this region they will help us in radio communication waves clear hence ionosphere it helps us in radio communication waves please do remember this particular point clear it is also highly important for you so next everyone know about hydrosphere like we have different oceans we have pacific ocean which is the largest one followed by atlantic ocean followed by indian ocean followed by arctic ocean followed by southern ocean generally in some of the many of the atlas we don't have this particular portion of southern ocean but still we can consider it clear so this everyone would be knowing like this is general knowledge question how many oceans are there what are they and how are they clear but apart from this the most important point which you have to remember regarding with this is this particular pacific indian atlantic oceans which are present these oceans have different water bodies associated with it like india have arabian sea and bay of bengal as it is india we know but how about the different water bodies of arctic ocean mediterranean sea different water bodies of atlantic ocean so what you do is post this lecture open the atlas and try to mark different water bodies which are present in this major water body clear so and try to remember its geographical location that would be highly helping you clear so at least at least minimum of five water bodies you have to remember related with this ocean clear so this work would be of from your part johan sir like when it is cold how it burns it is very simple so below the freezing point when we reach any object tends to be solidified and that solidify portion when it is completely under the freezing point it would be burnt away it is it is very common logic like so if you see the life to sustain on the surface it is the reaction between 
एटमोस्फियर लिथोस्फियर एंड हाइड्रोस्फियर हैज टू हैपन अदरवाइज लाइक द लाइफ सस्टेनेंट्स वुड नॉट हैपन इन दिस रीजन सिंपली आई एल गिव एन एग्जाम्पल एवोपरेशन फ्रॉम हाइड्रोस्फियर कंडेंसेशन इन द एटमोस्फियर एंड रेनफॉल ऑन लिथोस्फियर एंड अगेन ड्यू टू सर्फेस रन ऑफ थ्रू द रिवर्स द वॉटर एंटर इन टू हाइड्रोस्फियर सो दिस एंटायर थिंग इज अ साइकिल सो अंडर दिस साइक्लिकल प्रोसेस बिकॉज ऑफ द इंट्रैक्शन बिटवीन एटमोस्फियर हाइड्रोस्फियर एंड इन लिथोस्फियर वी वुड बी हैविंग सर्टन थिंग्स विच आर इंपॉर्टेंट दट इज वेर द लाइफ कैन एग्जिस्ट now major landforms is the next chapter which is present in ncert in that you have to like remember about these two certain points one is like endogenic movements and one is exogenic it is very simple those forces which come from interior of the earth those forces which come from interior of the earth they are called as endogenic forces and those come from exterior of the earth they are called as exogenic forces clear so because of that we would be having different landforms which would be generated on the earth surface and endogenic forces are responsible do remember this point endogenic forces are responsible for the mountain building process and exogenic forces are responsible for the erosion of this particular mountain building process if you see in the earth movements we have endogenic and exogenic and endogenic will be either again divided into two different forces like endogenic forces might be sudden forces or endogenic forces might be diastrophic forces like sudden forces are nothing but we can see the reaction very quickly the forces which are formed it would be very sudden in nature like the disturbance would be very sudden like we can experience earthquake volcanism and landslide as well but diastrophic forces are those forces which are very slow in nature it means those forces which are responsible for very minute changed during hundreds of years like it may take thousands of years for this particular consequence to happen they are called as diastrophic forces clear so the mountain building process like can anyone see sit and see the evolution of a mountain no that might have formed millions of years ago so in that regard those diastrophic forces they doesn't show the consequence that easily clear either we would be having mountain building process or we would be having sudden forces and if you see like exogenic forces they generally weather away for example if you have a mountain range which has been uh, like created uh, let's assume it as fold mountain and from this let's say that water started sprouting out in a stream manner as a river so what generally happens when this uh, river is moving from these particular rocks these rocks would be eroded weathered or disintegrated and that is nothing but an external pressure which has been put upon that is called as exogenic force and the factors which involve in the exogenic force might be river wind sea and glaciers and also sometimes underground water so whenever external force would be applied the erosional and depositional landforms which would be generated they are the examples of exogenic forces clear so if you see we have three important process which involves in this mountain building process like first one is fold mountain second is block third is volcanic see when two plates are coming what are plates plates are nothing but lithosphere as i have already said lithosphere is the topmost portion of that surface these lithospheric plates might be of two types continent or oceanic so when two continental plates are coming towards each other what happens is we would be having extreme compressional force which would be applied and when extreme compressional force would be applied no lithospheric plate tends to move down into the mat mantle rather because of the applied compressional force we would be having generation of fold mountains so when two continental plates or when oceanic and continental plate comes into picture then we would be having formation of fold mountain himalayas are the best examples where with the collision of indian plate with that of eurasian plate we have like we have creation of this particular himalayas so this is one kind of landform and moving further in the lectures like during the 10th 11th ncert so i'll go deeper into this while taking the plate tectonics theory for you clear and second set of mountains which are called as uh, block mountains they form in this regard like whenever two plates are moving away from each other we would be having generation of crack or fracture we can simply say it as crack or fracture so during this crack or fracture what happens is 
the central portion of the land tends to subside down and when the central portion of the land sent body it starts appearing like a block mountain it starts appearing like a mountain which is considered as block mountain so during either because of the compressional forces created on that surface or because of the tensional forces which are developed on that surface we would be having generation of mountains clear so first fold mountains are formed with the compressional forces block mountains are formed with the tensional forces so you can see like when the block mountains would be created the rift valleys which would be generated they are called as gray buns and the blocks which have left out there the upthrown blocks they are called as horst so this process is called as faulting in general fault is nothing but the displacement of huge rocks and during this faulting itself we would be having this rift valley formation and we would be having the formation of block mountains please do remember these certain statements clear so we also have volcanic mountains everyone know like during the volcanism when the volcanic magma tends to accumulate then we would be having huge amount of mountain chain which would be developed called as volcanic mountains clear so this is up with the sixth ncrt lecture in the next class we will be continuing up with the summaries of ncrts please try to watch this lecture daily at 12 pm i'll be coming up live for you by taking different summaries of ncrt is clear so please click on the bell icon for the continuous notifications and do subscribe to let's crack upsc csc english and please try to use my code called as vk10 before you get the subscription of an academy so that you would be getting 10 percent discount on the platform and also please give a like symbol like which will motivate me for better and better lectures and also please do share this video as much as you can so that there would be like maximum coverage of this particular video let it go to almost each, each and every part of the country done so hence thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day jai hind